Welcome back everybody, Guillaume here for Pure Programming. Today I will continue working on the simple image processor and the zoom feature. I will do mainly four things. First, clean up. Yes, once again I will clean up my code. Wow, we always have to clean up, right? Two, I will replace the text gadget by a string gadget so that you can input the zoom level uh, with the keyboard. Three, I will add a button. When you click, it will change the zoom level to fit the image exactly in the window. And finally, four, I will make sure that the image is always centered in the window. So, that being said, let's do some pure basic. Okay, back to the code. So, first step, clean up. Yes, last time, I ended up with this and I find some little things to change. Here, the order of the constant, I want to have them in the same order as in the window. Window width, window height. If you run this, you realize that this 640, 480 is actually this area here. And it's not the window height and window width, it's really the image area, height and width. So. Okay. Then I will refactor the quit procedure. So here I, um, I have renamed the unclosed window, the quit procedure to unclose window event. It's to be consistent with the other uh, event handler functions. Event menu on menu event, event gadget on. So this one I need to rename as well. I will rename it on event gadget, on gadget event. And this one it's a closed window. So it's the on close window event. And what I did is I added this test because this event is going to, be, going to be raised for any window in your program that is closed. So if you have, let's say, three windows open, if you click on one, this event will be raised. But you want to terminate the application only if you are closing the main window. That's why I'm adding uh, this test to check if it's the main window that we are closing. On event gadget, I said I wanted to rename this as well. Now clean up the display image and adjust gadget. Okay, so here I used local variables width and height, which I initialized to image width and image height. And I reuse these variables in the rest of the code, here and here for the width and here and here for the height. It's better because with this, you are calling only image width once and image height once. I also added a comment and I use this new paradigm here, this new way of adding a comment for the parameters. So param image, the image to display. Next, the open image. Okay, so here uh, I've replaced the empty string with double quotes just by the constant empty dollar. Uh, it's more readable like this. And also I'm testing the result of the load image. Let's say if you load an image that is a text file, you, you, you click on the wrong file, it will fail, but you don't want to do this part of the code if you failed to load the image. So you need to test the result. The load image says that it returns different than zero if it succeeded and zero if it failed. So you are testing different than zero. And you can even, in pure basic, different than zero is true and zero is false. So you can just remove this, it will be the same. Next, 
is the set zoom value. Okay, so for this one, I rename set zoom value to set zoom level. I pass a parameter the zoom level and I use this parameter to set the string in the text gadget and to set the trackbar uh, value. And I have replaced the reset, I have uh, deleted the reset zoom level function and replaced it with the set zoom level with 100 as the zoom, the base, the default zoom level. Okay. Next is the uh, on gadget event. Okay, so for the on gadget event, I just extracted some code in a separate procedure. So all this code here, apply zoom, uh, is reducing uh, the block here to just one call to the apply zoom procedure. And the apply zoom is a new procedure that takes three parameters, image source, image destination, and zoom level. It sets the zoom level on the text box and the track bar. Then if the source image is an image, it copies to the image destination, then compute the ratio from the zoom level, resize the image according to the new ratio, and display the image and adjust the gadget of the copy image, the image destination. Next is our main code. And here I did not do a lot of things just to clean up, put uh, this code on the next line, on a new line, because it's more readable like this. Okay, this should work. Let's try that. Actually, it should do exactly the same as it used. No, it does not work because I think I know why I did not change. I forgot the parameter here. Of course, incorrect number of parameters. What am I thinking? Okay, one more time. Ha, ah, now it works. This works. Let's open a file. Cube. I can zoom out. I can zoom in scroll bars still work perfect second step was to input the zoom level so to do that i need to replace the text gadget with a string gadget it's not going to be 100 percent because we just want to input the uh, value without the person sign. So I'm removing the person sign. And here, the flag, I'm putting string numeric. And this tells the string gadget that you can only input uh, numbers, positive numbers. Let's move that to 10. Here, I need to move the X. still want to display a person sign to, to tell the user that it's a percentage. So I'm adding a fixed text gadget with the person sign here. So let's see the result. Okay, so it does not work here because I still have my person sign here. I know why. And also the person sign here is kind of high. So I need to move this down a little bit. But if I move, 
see the text is still working nicely so what I know is in the zoom level I need to change some stuff I just need to remove the person sign here let's try again quickly exactly 100 so I think also that the uh, uh, string gadget is too wide so I'm going to reduce the size and also as I said I need to move down the person sign perfect so now I need to react to the change of my text because so far if I load an image and I change it it doesn't do anything let's do that Okay, so here, um, if you look at the string gadget documentation, you see that it can raise three events, each of one type, change when the text is modified, focus, and when the focus is, uh, when the gadget gets the focus, and lost focus when the gadget loses the focus. Uh, we don't want to change every time you are typing one character so we are going to use the lost focus event type that's what I'm doing here on gadget event so for the gadget zoom value which is the string gadget I'm switching on the event type if it's a lost focus then I'm doing the computation so what am I doing here I'm computing the zoom level that needs to be applied so whatever you have typed in the string gadget I get the text and then with this val function I'm converting the text into a number the zoom level let's say 123 and then I'm applying the zoom the same way but here I'm using the zoom level just computed above let's test this and say one two three tab key to lose the focus boom 500 boom and look the track bar is moving correctly 10 but there is something that is not going to work it's if you say one percent it actually goes to 1% for the image but the track bar is stuck at 10 and same if I put 1000 it zooms at 1000 but the track bar is stuck at 500 and we said we don't want the zoom level to go below 10 and uh, over 500 so we need to take care of this Okay, so here I'm changing the zoom level I'm getting the lower bound of my trackbar with the get gadget attribute on the zoom so on the trackbar and the attribute being PB trackbar minimum so that returns the lower bound of my trackbar which is 10 if zoom level is less than that I set the zoom level to exactly that if the zoom level is greater than the maximum I set the zoom level exactly to the maximum so it will not go out of the bounds actually of the track bar okay and now I've just cleaned up the code to use local variables for this computation let's try this I can just try it now if I put 10 a 1 sorry up 
it goes back to 10 because it's the minimum if I put 1000 it goes back to 500 that works next step is the fit button so I want to add a fit to area button uh, when you click the button it going to change the zoom level so that you see the entire image the image exactly fits in the window let's do this okay I should have my button now fit to area very nice but if I click it it doesn't do anything even if I open the image because I did not bind anything I think it's a little bit too close to the person sign so I'm going to re augment the margin here just by multiplying here by two two times the margin here let's look at that okay much better let's do the code behind the button Okay, so now that I have my uh, button, I put some code when I click on the button. So when you click on the button, it will raise uh, an event, PB event gadget. So you are handling that on the on gadget event, adding a new case, case gadget fit. So if the button is clicked, then here I'm computing which zoom level I need to apply to exactly fit the image inside my uh, window. So I'm dividing the scroll image width by the image width. This gives me the horizontal ratio. But what if the, the image is vertical, you know, more like a portrait? Uh, so I need also to compute the vertical ratio. And what I want to do is apply as a zoom level, I want to apply the uh, minimum of the ratio because I want to be able to see the whole image. So I added a new function, a new procedure min that will that returns the minimum of two values. And then I'm applying the zoom and the mean uh, procedure is here. So it, it's taking doubles. Uh, so it returns a double and takes two doubles A and B, first value, second value, and returns the lowest of the two values. Let's try this. Fit to area. Look at that. Exactly the size of the window. If I open a vertical image, it's fit to area. It exactly fits the image within the window that works here it will not be okay if the image is not loaded correctly let's try that if i don't load any image and i click here it fails because the image width call here is going to crash Okay, so I just added an if it's an image. If the image main has been loaded, then we can do all this. Let's try. Fit to area. When no image is loaded, it doesn't do anything. When an image is loaded, it works. Okay, and last step, fourth step is to center my image within my window when it's 
zoomed out. When you can see the whole image, I'd like it to be centered within the window. Let's do this. Okay, let's try. You see, fit to area, it is centered. There is an issue. See, if I zoom in, it keeps centered, but I cannot scroll to the top of the image. So I need to center the image only if it's smaller than the uh, image area. Let's do that. So first let's explain what I did. Here I defined two variables where will be my x and my y, so my coordinates of my image, because to center the image I just need to move it to the correct location within the scroll area. That's what I do with the x and y coordinates. Okay, let me explain. You have your scroll area here, okay? And you want to put your image in the center of your scroll area. So you need first to find the center of your scroll area. And to find the X of and Y of your image. So what you want is exactly find the X here and the Y here of your image. To find that, you're go going to find the center of your scroll area and subtract half of the size of the image. So the center of the scroll area is located at scroll width over two, and here, scroll height over two. And you want to subtract half of the image dimension. So here you have image width. So you want to subtract image width. Uh, you want to subtract image width over two to get your X. So X is going to be scroll area width over two minus image width over two, which can be written as scroll area width minus image width over 2. And the same is right for your Y. It's going to be directly, you can say it's going to be scroll area height minus image height over 2. And that will give you your Y. So with these formulas, you get your X and your Y. That's exactly what I did here. X is gadget width of the scroll image. So the scroll area width minus the image width over two and same for the Y. And so when I resize my gadget, instead of PB ignore, I put the X, the Y to move my image and the width and height to resize my image. And the little trick here is also to add the X and Y here to my uh, scroll area inner width. Why is that? Back to the screen here. Let me try to explain. We have our scroll area. One, when the image was at zero, zero, it was like this. To tell the scroll area what to display, you have to give an inner width and inner height. And in that case, you would say inner height equals image height. And here, inner width equals image width, because you just want to display this part. The scroll area gadget is not going to display anything in this part. But now we want the image to be centered here. Same size, but in the center. If you keep the inner width 
to these dimensions here. Well, you're basically telling the scroll area to display only this, this rectangle here. And so you are going to crop the scroll area gadget is going to crop this part of the image and you're not going to see this part of the image. So because here you have your Y and here you have your X, you have to tell the scroll area that its inner width is now here and there. The inner rectangle is here to be able to display the full image. And so the inner widths become inner width plus x and the inner height becomes inner image height plus y image width plus x image height plus y and you will get this rectangle here and you will display the complete image I hope I am clear Okay, this works. If I remove my X and my Y, look what it does. It crops the image. So I need to put them back. But to prevent the centering when the image is greater, larger than the uh, window, we need to actually add here a max okay so here I'm taking the maximum between 0 and the actual X that I computed if the if the image is larger than the window the X will get negative if the image and the Y also will be negative so by max by taking the max between 0 and this x or this y it will keep the image at the 0 0 coordinate if it's larger than the window let's try if i zoom in you see the image stays at 0 0 but if i zoom out it is centered and i fit to area that works. Good job, we're done. All right, that's gonna be the end of this video. Don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe if you're new and also check out the description box. You'll find some interesting links. You'll find a link to download today's source code. You'll find a link to the Pure Basic website and you'll find a link to the Pure Programming merch store. That's right. You can buy yourself a very nice I need it, I could it t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, apron, hat, whatever, they're all printed on demand. So check them out. That being said, thank you for watching. I will see you very soon.